Have you ever wondered what the hell a lipid is? Well, even if you haven't, it is coming up in the AQA level biology exam, so we better cover it today. Stay tuned. Lipids are a fascinating biological molecule, and we're going to look at the structure and function of lipids today. So some key terms to get us started. Well, lipids are hydrocarbon molecules, meaning they're made up of hydrogen and carbon predominantly, and they include things like fats, oils, hormones, and waxes. Fats are solid at room temperature, which is about 18 to 21 degrees. So fats are a type of lipid. Oils are liquid at room temperature. So again, we're talking around 18 to 21 degrees. So there'll be a liquid at that temperature. Hydrocarbons are long chains of hydrogen and carbon. Now remember, carbon can form four bonds. Hydrogen forms one. Triglycerides are made up of a glycerol plus free fatty acids. Then a fatty acid is basically a long hydrocarbon chain as we've just discussed, but it does have a carboxyl group at the end. And think carboxyl, carbon, oxygen, carboxyl. Fatty acids can be saturated or they can be unsaturated. And that just depends whether or not they've got a double carbon bond. Glycerol is a free carbon molecule you'll find in triglycerides. Saturated fatty acids do not have double carbon bonds or carbon to carbon double bonds. Unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double carbon to carbon bond. And a polyunsaturated fatty acid has two or more double carbon bonds. This is going to cause a kink in the hydrocarbon chain. Phospholipids, they're predominantly found in things like cell membranes, vesicles, any kind of membrane that surrounds an organelle, for example. And they're made up of a phosphate head, a glycerol, and two fatty acids. We're going to contrast those with triglycerides later because AQAA level biology really wants you to know the difference between them. Phosphate ions, they're inorganic because they don't contain carbon. They're PO4, so a phosphorus and four oxygens, and they have a negative charge. The emulsion test is the test for lipids. We'll look at the method for this later because you need to know it for the AQA exam. Insoluble means it does not dissolve in water or the solvent that is in question. Soluble means that it does dissolve in water or the solvent that's been spoken about. Hydrophobic means repelled by water. Hydrophilic means attracted to water. So think about a phobia being a fear. You're going to move away from a fear just like something that's hydrophobic will move away from water. Polar means that it's got a charge. So some common examples of charged atoms or molecules in the AQA A-level biology specification include water, sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions, calcium ions. There are a few that you need to know. Nonpolar is when it doesn't have a charge. So molecules like carbon dioxide or water are classic examples of nonpolar molecules. They don't require proteins to get across the membrane. Check out my video on facilitated diffusion for more info on that. Condensation is where bonds are formed, releasing water. And hydrolysis is when bonds are broken, using water. Now let's have a look at triglycerides in a bit more detail here. Now what we can see at the top, we've got a glycerol first of all, and then that gets bound to one, two, three fatty acids. And that's where the term tri comes from. Think about a tricycle that has three wheels. A triglyceride has one, two, three fatty acids. And you can see here that water is removed. Okay, so H2O, we've got one hydrogen from the glycerol and the OH from the carboxyl group of the fatty acid gets removed. So that will form H2O. And then this is gonna form our triglyceride over here. And you can see we've got three H2Os there. And the bond is between the oxygen of the glycerol and the carbon of the carboxyl group of the fatty acid. So what we do is we remove three molecules of water and that will form an ester bond between free fatty acids and glycerol. So to summarize, triglycerides are made of free fatty acids and a glycerol. The fatty acids are hydrophobic, so this region is hydrophobic. There are ester bonds between the glycerol and fatty acids. And finally, the diagram above shows a condensation reaction, which you need to know about for A-level biology. So 
We've got our triglyceride at the top right. Now, what are they all about? Well, triglycerides are used in energy storage. When broken down, energy is released from the hydrocarbon chain and fats have around nine calories per gram, as opposed to carbohydrates and proteins, which have four calories per gram. So there's a lot of energy in those bonds. Triglycerides do not affect the water potential because they're insoluble. This is an example of fatty acid structure, and we're going to have a look at the difference between saturated at the top and unsaturated at the bottom. Well, the saturated one's got the carboxyl group at the beginning, and so does the unsaturated, so that's fine. But if we look at the chain, the saturated fatty acid has got single carbon bonds all the way through. Whereas, if we look at the unsaturated, it's got single carbon bonds, but then we have a double carbon bond here. Now, the important thing to remember is that carbon can only form four bonds. So what we do is we remove a hydrogen there as well. So there's no hydrogen uh, at the bottom of that carbon, but there is a double bond there. So unsaturated double carbon bonds. Phospholipids, next of all. So they basically have one of the triglycerides replaced by a phosphate ion. So you can see our PO4 at the top there, which is our phosphate head. We've got our glycerol there, which is our free carbon molecule. And then we've got two fatty acids coming off it with that shared oxygen in the ester bond. Now they're found in the phospholipid bilayer. They have a, a water soluble hydrophilic head and a water repelling hydrophobic tail. There is a phosphoester bond between the phosphate and glycerol and an ester bond between the glycerol and each fatty acid. So we can see here hydrophobic tails at the bottom, hydrophilic head at the top. It's really important you remember that. And this is how phospholipids behave in water. They'll form a bilayer, okay, shown on the left of this bottom diagram here, or they'll form what's called a mycele. So that's spelled M-I-C-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And that's where all of the phosphate heads will be around the outside because they're water soluble. And all of the tails will point inside because they're water repelling. So triglycerides versus phospholipids. This is a, a past paper question, actually. You know, what's the difference between a triglyceride and a phospholipid that comes up in AQAA level biology? So first of all, triglycerides have three fatty acids, whereas phospholipids only have two. Next, phospholipids contain a phosphate, whereas triglycerides do not. Finally, Phospholipids have a phosphoester bond between the phosphate head and the glycerol, and they have two ester bonds between the glycerol and the fatty acids. Now, in contrast to this, triglycerides have no phosphoester bonds and free ester bonds. So the emulsion test for lipids next. So step one is to add the sample to a test tube. Now, if it's a liquid, that's fine. But if it's something like a solid, like seeds or nuts, You'll crush those in a pestle and mortar first. Then you'll add ethanol to the sample and shake the tube. After this, and I've put here in bold, then add water. Because in the AQA level biology mark schemes, you often get a mark for saying you add ethanol first, then you add water. If you put it the other way around, you'll lose that mark. Now, a positive result will be a white or milky emulsion. And the key part of this is emulsion. And I've literally listed this definition by looking at a past paper and seeing what AQA want. They want you to put a white emulsion, but they will accept a milky emulsion. Okay. Now, greater concentrations of lipid will give a whiter, more easily distinguishable emulsion. So that's everything on lipids today, guys. I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, do not forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next.